out. We're not running coolant. We're running at 1,600 inches a minute. So I've actually programmed the Titan 826 in master cam. We're roughing it all out, doing all the pockets, getting it all done. This thing's gonna be insane. And if any of you guys wanna run this part, this crazy aerospace bracket, go to the Aerospace Academy. And this is a Titan 826 right here. You guys can actually grab the model, grab the print, and make it yourself. So we're not running coolant, we're just running air and it's just for camera. Right after this, I'm gonna actually give you guys a tutorial on the RSP. It's our pallet pull system. The RSP has 12 pallet locations. The machine has two pallets, so it's a total of 14. And then I'm gonna teach you how to program it. You can load pallets, you can place pallets, boom, boom, in all the different stations. And then you can actually attach programs to those pallets. You can turn the pallets on, turn them off, you can attach programs to them. You can simply hit go, and this machine will actually follow a whole sequence for like days or weeks or literally nonstop for years and just run part after part after part. This is a loading station where your pallet is actually served up to you and then you can actually load that pallet with your fix string, with your work holding. And then once the work holding is in place, you can simply put the material in, lock it down, and then you take the pallet and you send it on its way. Bring in a new pallet, load the material, lock it down, and then send it on its way and repeat that process. And you're also at the same time taking out done parts, done parts, done parts. Depending on the application, you can leave for hours or leave for a week and then basically come back all the parts are done, it's still machining, and you just come over here, spend a couple hours, reload material, reload material, boom. These machines, they run forever. When I went down to Detroit Diesel, they had 50 machines like this in a cell, but instead of a pallet pool like this, which is a circular unit, you actually had like a railroad with a robot that was grabbing the material, the engines and placing it in the machine, coming back, grabbing it, putting a new one in, crazy system. But this guy right here is great for us to teach you guys all about automation. All right, so the part just got finished and I'm gonna take you guys through the process of taking the part, flipping it to the outside of the machine and then getting it over inside the RSP to the loading station where I can actually unload the part and put new material in. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside of my program. I'm gonna go into, it says MDA, it's MDI. So I'm gonna click this bad boy right there. Then to rotate the pallet, I'm simply going to hit M60. So M60, you see it right there. And then I simply hit start. It's gonna go in motion. The pallet just went to the outside of the machine. Now, before I walk over to the RSP, I have to link the machine and the RSP together. And how I do that is simply by going to auto. Now our part is on the outside of the machine. Before we got the RSP pallet system, I'd simply walk around the machine to the front of the machine. I'd open the doors. I'd actually look at my part, take it out, replace it with new material. But now we got the monster RSP system in place. So I need to get the part from the front of the machine, which I can't get to, and I need to have the robot bring it out, move it, and bring it into the loading station so I can actually check out the part. So to do that, I have to link the machine and the RSP together. So I simply hit auto. See this rectangle right here? That's linking. Now the machine is hooked to the RSP. So come on over here. Now this is where we control the RSP pallet system. And when you look right up here, these are the two pallets in the machine. And what it's telling me is that inside the machine, there's no pallet. But on this side, there's the pallet. That's where our part is. Now to move the pallet from the front of the machine inside to this loading station right here, I'm simply gonna grab this guy. I'm gonna drag and drop it to the loading station. And as soon as I do that, you actually see it. Transport order created. Now, when I come over here, check this out. You can actually see it. Let 
Now you can see the pallet with the work holding with the part getting loaded right here. So we see that the door is actually locked. So I'm gonna hold this down. Boom. And there's my part. Right now the part's all roughed. We're gonna actually release it. We're gonna release the pressure, reclamp, come back with a finished pass. But I just wanted to take this time to just teach you how it all works, all right? So now when you're in the loading station, that's where you attach your program to it. So when it's in the loading station, you can see remove and reassemble. Now, if we hit reassemble, we're gonna actually hit this guy right there. And now this is where you attach your priority and your program. Now, these are the different programs we have. We have a couple demos, the part that I just programmed, and we have another one that's mine also. So what we do is we take the pallet, we attach the program to the pallet, and then we give the pallet a priority. And then once we set this thing in motion and say, go, and then it's simply gonna go by priority to the end. So let's say that I had four pallets in a row and I wanted to run the first three, but not the four. So what I would do is I'd actually come over here. I'd take my program. I would drag it down here. I would attach it. Then I would simply come over here and then I'd hit whatever the priority number is for the pallet based on the schedule that I'm creating. So I got my program, I got my priority number three because I already have priority one and two in the machine. It says raw stock right there. So once I actually say start, it'll actually run all the pallets to say raw. If I have four pallets all pulled up and I only wanna run priority one, two, and three, then the fourth, I would actually come over here and I would say finished. And by saying finished, it wouldn't touch it. So we could block it, we can say it's finished, and that's how we don't touch these other pallets. And if we have priority one, two, and three, and it's all set, and each one has its own program, we can then hit this guy. We no longer have to go to the machine. The robot places it in the machine. The machine rotates into the spindle. It makes the part. When the first priority is done, it'll actually come to the front of the machine. The robot will grab the first priority, place it, grab the second priority, put it into the machine, rotate the pallet, boom, 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 all three done. And when you finish all three, then it would stop unless you had additional priorities. Now, if we wanna actually close the doors, we can close the doors, we can say it's ready, boom. All right, now that the doors are closed, watch this. I can simply take this pallet and I can move it into an open station over here. Boom. Transport order created. And the robot is in motion. Now, a couple other different things that I wanna talk about is like, what's up with the colors? When you actually come up, you can actually hit edit right here. Then you hit palette, boom. And you see it says raw material. So it actually thinks that there's raw material in that palette. If the palette actually has finished material, I can come over here, boom. And then I can say finished. And then I say save and close. And now we have a green pallet right there. So the green pallets are finished and the yellow is raw material. But on this particular one, since it's not done, I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna go back to raw because we still have one more operation to finish pass on this part. All right, so these are all the pallets. So you got the pallets inside the machine, on the loader, loading station. You got the top row, which is the top pallets in the system. And then you got the lower pallets. Now, when you look at the top pallets, they're actually outlined in red. And that is because you can come in here, they're blocked. So when they're outlined in red, we basically have closed the door and said, you cannot place a pallet here, okay, until we unlock it. So it's blocked right there. If I wanted to unblock it, I would hit that bad boy, boom. And now I opened up a station on the top and then I can actually take a pallet and place it into that empty slot. 
boom, so easy, right? It is so crazy. Now, this might not seem like a lot, but I wanna explain. When you're dealing with competing against other countries, when you're building an amazing shop, when you have your own product or you have crazy contracts with big companies and you're running parts month in and month out and year in and year out, your whole mindset has to change. You know, when you start off in machining, you're dealing with you know, just singular machines and, and you're having operators and machinists on those machines. But when, when you have the right type of contracts, it's all about getting the cost down and time is money. So what we wanna do is we wanna set up one time. That means that we build up a, a pallet one time for that application, then we never touch it again. All we do is keep putting raw material in, taking finished parts out. And then when we're done with it, we simply take the pallet and we just stack it and load it and it goes into a waiting cycle until it's time to use that pallet again. Now, when you get to this level, this mindset, you simply get rid of all reoccurring setups. You know, when you look at the programming, you're programming different because it's all about chips evacuation. It's about small chips coming out, coolant flow, all of it. You cannot break tools. You cannot have a down machine. You gotta use tool management. You have to, tool management is like saying, hey, I got this rougher, so I'm gonna actually have this one rougher and I'm gonna duplicate it up here so I can run this tool for an hour or a certain amount of parts. And then as soon as it's done, it's gonna take this other tool, it's gonna to run it in its place. So the machine just keeps running and running and running. Any problem that would arise, you solve that problem and you keep going. It is a mentality, it is a mindset, and it is a talent. But I'm telling you, if you're a shop leader, if you're an owner of a company and you're thinking, can I actually manufacture right here in my own country? I'm telling you, it is possible. I've talked enough, so I'm gonna end this video. If you love what we're throwing down, you love the education, even if you're not stepping up to this level, it's just fascinating to understand how it all works. So hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, make comments down below. If you have ideas, if you have questions, please put them in the comments and we will actually look through. We'll probably comment right there. You can become a member also of our YouTube channel. Hit that membership button and you can talk to our team on a daily basis. So good. Love you, I'm out, boom.